Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We've invited first class, now we're inviting executive platinum, platinum, emerald, sapphire, and for me, it feels worth the Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Crew Travel right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome back the idiosyncratic <laughs> Lee Harris. How are you? I, I wondered where that was going, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I had to read it, and, and I'm blind, you, so, yeah. Well, you, you upped your game from last week anyway. I don't, I don't know what it means. I'm, I, you know, I mean, I, I had visions of you calling me just an idiot on, la- on air, so <laughs> anything well, that's above that is good. <laughs> it's actually a fancy way of saying odd. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'll take that. That's probably right. <laughs> oh, the idiosyncratically Harris. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and I have to mention that Crew Travel is brought to you weekly by Blue Marine Travel, who haven't lost a passenger since Lee Harris was born back in the late 1900s. And of course, their people move people. News this week out of Spain. The Spanish authorities have announced that travelers from third countries uh, who have been subject to stricter rules will no longer be required to complete or show the health control form upon their arrival. Uh, as of Tuesday, September the 20th, the Spain Travel Health Portal, both the website and the mobile application, will no longer be operational. Uh, it will no longer be necessary to complete the health control form to travel to Spain, nor to show the QR code at the airport of arrival. Uh, now, previously, the health control form, which indicated whether a traveler had been vaccinated, recovered or tested negative for COVID and included other additional information had to be filled in online before reaching Spain by all travellers who did not hold an EU digital COVID certificate as well as by those who did not hold a certificate approved by the EU. Uh, Once the travellers arrived in Spain they had to show the document to the airport or seaport authorities to be to be permitted entry into the country. Uh, Now, despite Spain dropping the requirement to fill in the health control form, the authorities just recently extended the requirement to present one of the COVID passes until November the 15th. Uh, The Spanish ministry said earlier this week that travellers from non-EU countries would continue to be required to present a vaccination, recovery or test certificate. Uh, Meanwhile, the Netherlands announced on Saturday that all COVID foreign travel curbs and requirements were being scrapped for their country. A statement said the government's decision means that as of 17th of September, no COVID-19 related restrictions or requirements apply to travellers entering the Netherlands, including including sorry those from countries outside the EU and the Schengen area. And what has happened with the French airstrike? French air traffic controllers have called off a three-day strike scheduled for September 28th, 29th and 30th. Uh, The industrial action was expected to cause significant disruption to airports around the country, uh, but was abandoned after a dispute over wages and staff numbers were resolved with France's Civil Aviation Authority. Uh, The union that represents the French air traffic controllers said after 48 hours of continuous conciliation in an extremely tight schedule, an agreement was reached allowing the lifting of the strike notice. Uh, the threat of strike action came a week after a one week, uh, sorry, one day walkout by French air traffic controllers on September 16th, uh, which prompted EasyJet to cancel 76 flights, British Airways to cancel 22 and Ryanair to cancel 420, affecting 80,000 passengers in total. Crisis avoided and heading over to Amsterdam. Yeah, that's right. Not so good news for Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, uh, as they've announced that they will be cutting passenger levels in October due to an ongoing shortage of security staff. Uh, With the summer bonus for staff is now over, reports suggest that many are heading for the door, uh, leaving the airport unable to maintain its already lowered cap. Uh, Amsterdam's main hub will reduce its daily passenger cap to 57,000 per day in October. Uh, This is a reduction of 9,250 passengers every day, uh, or an 18% drop from the already capacity capacity restricted levels in August. Uh, The reduction will quickly hurt passengers since airlines will have to cut flights in proportion to the newly implemented cap. Uh, This latest reduction means Schiphol's long-standing woes from the summer will likely drag into the winter, uh, with tens of thousands of passengers left frustrated. Now, for any crew who are due to travel to or from or through Amsterdam, please do keep in contact with your travel provider. There's news out of Hong Kong. Uh, So after two and a half years, the Hong Kong government will put an end to its controversial COVID-19 hotel quarantine policy for all arrivals. Uh, This measure will end this week on September the 26th. Uh, Hong Kong has had one of the strictest COVID-19 travel restrictions worldwide, uh, including mandatory hotel quarantine, health monitoring and testing. Uh, Currently, all international arrivals spend three days in a self-paid hotel, followed by four days of self-monitoring. In the past, hotel quarantines were as many as three weeks. And France may have avoided it, but 
Looks like Italy may not. Uh, it would be the show without any uh, strike news, would it? Uh, so, And it seems the summer of strikes will extend into the next season. Uh, unions confirmed in a statement earlier this week that pilots and cabin crew of both Ryanair and Vueling in Italy will go on strike on Saturday, October the 1st, over wages and working conditions. Uh, the industrial action of the two low-cost carriers will differ from one another. Uh, Ryanair staff will hold a 24-hour walkout. Meanwhile, Vueling crew will only strike for four hours, beginning at one o'clock and returning to work at 5 p.m. Uh, according to trade unions, the strike is being organised due to the failure of the airlines to grant acceptable working conditions and wages that are in line with minimum national salaries. And last but not least, crew questions. Yeah, after a break of a couple of weeks, we do have a crew question this week. Uh, we received a question in from Gabriel this week wanting to know why there are no flights showing operating between Paris or the airport and New York in November and December this year. Uh, now, unfortunately, Gabriel, the six weekly flights between Orly and New York have been suspended from October through until they restart again in March of next year. Uh, however, Gabriel, it's not all bad news as Air France will still have several daily direct flights to New York. However, they will all be operating from Charles de Gaulle Airport for the remainder of this year thank you very much lee as always it's been a pleasure aria and uh yep same time same place next week and i'm um, looking forward to it and i have to mention that crew travel is brought to you weekly by blue marine travel who haven't lost passengers since lee harris was born back in the late 1900s and of course their people move people you have been watching another edition of crew travel right here on yachting international radio my name is ria i have been your host We'll see you again next week.